Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. I'm going to be talking about anger this week and specifically about how anger can be used as a tool or a weapon for people to get what they want. Now, most people get angry when they have expectations that are, are not met. Um, anger tends to come from pain and from hurt. Um, it's a response to sort of for us to defend ourselves against what we perceive as a world that's attacking us or not going as we expect it to go in the case of an unmet expectation. But there are some people that choose anger as a way to get what they want. And I've known a number of them over my life. Um, one of them used to use it regularly whilst driving and I didn't actually realise the extent that they used it until we had a conversation about it and they told me that it kept them alert, it kept them vigilant and I think it kind of gave them a bit of a rush. Um, this particular person also used it in their business lives with um, colleagues and people that they worked with to get people to do what they wanted them to do. And if you find that you have some similarities to this and you can recognise in yourself that you tend to use anger as a weapon or a tool, I would just simply like to bring to your attention, I know that this particular person I'm talking about used it in an attempt to get respect or gain respect, but there's a misunderstanding in that because people might do what you tell them to do because they don't want to necessarily confront you or deal with the anger that's being unleashed on them. But that does not mean that they respect you or that they trust you or that they care for you or love you or whatever it is. I mean, I'm talking about office environments, but this spills when I talk about love and trust and things like that, spills over into private lives as well. You cannot force somebody to share their vulnerabilities and to, to care for you or to respect you. Those things don't come from force. They come from a completely different space. They come from caring, from compassion, from being vulnerable yourself, from learning to trust yourself, from respecting other people, from truly listening and understanding people. And when you use anger, you're actually stamping roughshod over all of those different things that I've spoken about. If you find that what I've shared speaks to you in that respect, and I'm going to actually go into, for anyone else listening who, <laughs> who doesn't, is on the receiving end, I'm going to share something with you shortly. But I sort of wanted to speak to both parties in this particular episode. So if you find that you use anger for those things, then what I would do, and I can't really go into it in too much detail because it's something that would take quite a bit of work with somebody to really understand and move past, but it would be worth it, absolutely worth it, is really just to reflect on yourself and your life and try and see if there are ways that you can do things differently or try and find people or observe people that do things differently that you can learn from. I would imagine it'd be quite scary to let go of using anger as a, as a tool to get what you want, purely because you would have to then become vulnerable and you would have to face things that you most likely haven't faced and is the reason why you use anger. Um, but it's entirely up to you. I'm just simply scattering a few seeds for you to think about. Now, to move on to the people in the receiving end of somebody using anger to get what they want. I'm somebody who's never particularly liked confrontation and I've had to deal with people <laughs> who've been angry, not all my life, but in various forms throughout, sort of, you know, intermittently through my life. And I've learned quite a lot from it. One of the things is you cannot argue your way out of a situation where someone is trying to use anger to get you to do what they want to do, because ultimately they don't really care <laughs> what your arguments are. You can't get them to understand your point of view, because when they're using anger against you to get you to do what they want to do, they're not trying to understand and they don't really want to understand your point of view or what it is you, you know, how you're experiencing something. The best way to treat somebody who's using anger to get what they want is a bit like you would treat a toddler having a temper tantrum. Not a condescending way, but as a parent who truly loves the person having the temper tantrum. It's to do it with compassion, to understand that the person who is trying to, who's using anger against you, trying the best way they can to get their own needs met. 
they haven't learned another way to deal with life. This is the way that they've been taught, the way they've, been, they've grown up, and it's the only way that they know. Um, so don't make them wrong. Don't try and put them down or shame them because that's just going to make them even more angry. The best way is to try and let go of all of your emotions and become very present in the moment. Because if you react with any emotion, then either you're going to be allowing yourself to be moved and shifted to do what they want, or you're going to be in resistance to what they want. And either way, it's going to cause more of a sort of explosion. It's going to put fuel on the fire, so to speak. So the first thing that you need to do is take a deep breath and acknowledge your own emotions that are going on because they most likely will have, you most likely will have emotions in response to somebody who's being angry towards you. Acknowledge those emotions and accept that you've got them and then take, take a deep breath and allow them almost to pass on because emotions are only there to tell you what is going on around you, to inform you of your situation, whether it benefits you or not. I'll put a link in the show notes below to a episode I did specifically on emotions where I go into much more depth about this. The next thing to do is to try to really understand what it is that the person's trying to convey and also understand that you don't need to say yes or no or comply with what they're saying. And if you do choose to not do what they're asking you to do, it's to do it from a non-emotional space and to be immovable about it. Obviously, if you're in a personal environment and there's a threat of violence, then please make sure you extricate yourself from that and, and seek help and advice. Um, I'm just talking about somebody having a temper tantrum with words and through emotion rather than physical violence. Physical violence is a whole nother thing and I wouldn't want you to be in a situation where that is likely to happen. So the first thing is to ground yourself, to acknowledge your emotions and find a neutral space for yourself so that you can be there and present without being emotional. The next thing is to choose what to do from your own highest good and what is good for you. Don't allow the person who's who's being angry to push you around and use their anger because once they've done it once or twice, they'll do it more and more. And if this is a situation where this has happened numerous times, then you might find that it takes time to unlearn the pattern or for that person to learn that they can't use anger against you. If it's a new sort of relationship and it's once or twice that this has happened before, then you'll find the change might be more quick. Um, so it's to stand up for yourself, but to do it in a way that is neutral and to honour yourself, not to argue, not to make them wrong, not to point fingers or blame or anything like that, but simply to say, this doesn't work for me. And it can be quite hard. I know I've found it very hard in the past not to argue back. And I think my mother could attest to this. <laughs> I have a need to explain myself and to get someone to understand. But when someone's using anger in that way, those options are just not possible. And when you stand there in your own power and in your own space and you say no, it's amazing the strength and the, the immovability that you have when you're in the right space. And... It's also wonderful and there's a lovely sort of feeling when you walk away and you realise that you've honoured yourself, but not just that you've honoured yourself, you've also honoured the other person. You've seen them, you understood where they are and understood why they're doing what they're doing. You haven't made them wrong, you haven't tried to belittle them, but at the same time you've held your ground and held your barriers and your boundaries. I hope this has helped um, understand how people can use anger as a tool, because I didn't for years realise that. Um, also maybe to understand a little bit more about anger, because I don't want to make anger wrong, it isn't. Um, it's an emotion that is higher than grief um, on a vibratory scale. And I'll put a link to the different um, levels of emotional sort of vibration below as well, so that you can see how we shift up and down them. So being angry and feeling angry, I don't want you to think that if you feel angry that all of a sudden you're using anger, that's not necessarily the case. Feeling angry is not a bad thing. But, but using that anger and externalizing it and projecting it onto others, that can cause pain. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you want to hear more from me, then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Um, I do offer coaching to help people shift from the ego, sort of fear-based survival state and way of living that a lot of us have, have lived in most of our lives into a more aligned, conscious, self-aware space. I also offer online courses um, along the lines of all of the stuff that I talk about. And 
You'll find those on my website. The link to that is below in the show notes, along with all my social media links where you'll see all the things that I'm up to and what I'm doing. Have a fabulous week. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.